everyone, my name is Kevin. I'm the creator of D-Series Simulation and I just wanted to show you how to uh, download and install the game and get it set up and working properly on your system. All the links and uh, websites you're going to need are going to be in the description below. Uh, let's get started. Just go to devoted.com and then you're going to click on D-Series. And then in the menu bar here you're going to see Downloads. Then you're going to click on Download D-Series Auto Installer. Uh, the full game and the free demo are the same download. So once you've downloaded that, you're going to have a zip file that's going to say D series and then the version number. Once you extract that, it will give you this D series installer. Simply double click that to install. Uh, accept the software agreement and then it's just going to put a brand new folder called D series into your program files uh, to uninstall the game, simply delete that D-Series folder from your program files and the thing is completely gone. Um, if I was to hit this extract button it would put all those folders and make a double copy but I've already done that so for the tutorial purposes we're just going to hit cancel and uh, if I was to click that it, it would create this desktop icon. We double click the desktop icon it brings you to your configuration settings. Uh, you've got input and graphics here for the two tabs graphics. Uh, any resolution that your video card is capable of using will be in this drop down menu. We're going to choose 1920 by 1200. Uh, windowed mode. This checkbox will decide if the game plays in windowed mode or full screen. Uh, be careful when it is in windowed mode. If you do use the X to close the game, uh, it will not save your player preferences. So make sure to use the stop button on the inside of the game on the menu uh, and save your player preferences that way. Uh, graphics quality. There's six different choices ranging in level of detail, amount of shadows, uh, anti-aliasing, vertical sync, all that good stuff. Uh, input, simply double click, you've got your uh, controller mapping and then what all your stuff is on the left side here, it's got a nice little description. To set something up, let's say like for my handbrake button, double click it, hit the button on the joystick and obviously right there, boom, number four comes up. Pretty straightforward. Uh, other than that, when you're ready to start the game, hit play. Then once you've started the game, it'll bring you to this updating menu. Automatically check your game to make sure you're running the uh, most current version. Uh, I'm not, so it says there is a new version available. Uh, you can either skip this version or you can go to the downloads page and check out the newest version. Uh, we're just going to skip it. Whenever you start the game for the first time, there's no preferences or anything set. It'll bring you to this menu. It's the uh, initializer. Uh, you can set your uh, player name. Click next step. Here's where it warns you if you go any farther without a force feedback wheel plugged in, the game will crash. So we do have a force feedback wheel plugged in, so we're just going to click calibrate. Uh, and this will automatically set up, this is the calibration system that will automatically set the steering wheel up so the in game wheel matches the wheel that's in your hands. Uh, each vehicle in D-Series is different. It does have a different rotational, you know, lock-to-lock -lock, uh, amount of degrees uh, of rotation. You know, each one's different in each car. So, like, the go-kart is 180 degrees, you know, lock-to-lock, -lock, because it's a go-kart. There's no rack and pinion steering in it. So, uh, each car being different, uh, I've built a, a system in here to automatically set each vehicle up. So, once we calibrate our vehicle one time, uh, it will set up all of them individually. Uh, so, basically, center your wheel hit start and then you're going to turn the wheel 90 degrees to the right and then you're going to hit done again and I missed it by a little bit but it's uh, I think my wheel set up for 900 degrees uh, it gave us 836 degrees but uh, close enough for the uh, tutorial we're doing basically now you can you can turn your wheel and it should match the on-screen wheel uh, if you want to use your own profiler settings and let's say you want to use 300 degrees of rotation for the, the truck that normally uses 700 uh, or, or 680, you can click use my own profiler settings after setting this up. So now that your wheel matches the on-screen wheel, you go ahead and hit this button here, and it's going to reset all the multipliers to, to linear 1. So anything that's in your Windows profiler setting uh, will be used in game. But we're going to use the automatic system, so we're just going to go ahead and click save to continue to garage. Okay, now that we have the wheel calibrated, we're in the garage and uh, you want to click on the options menu on the top. That will bring up this menu here. Uh, 
These here are for checking to see if your axes and your buttons are working properly. Like now I'll hit the gas halfway. And then once I get it all the way, you'll see this light will come on. Uh, the wheel above it will show us the wheel and how far the wheel is in its rotation. Uh, these in the center here, will these dip switches are actually for setting up uh, different pedal styles. So uh, before this, I, I just built this build last night. So uh, before this, some people were having problems with the club sport pedals and uh, some of the pedals that work on different axes. So if you're having problems now, just go ahead and try one of these. Uh, uh, the throttle normalize, the brake normalize, or the clutch normalize, and that should be able to set it up properly. So go ahead and set these dip switches uh, until these down here are matching properly. Like now I'm hitting the gas full and then releasing the red and the blue or the clutch and then a little bit of gas if I can get my foot all the way over there. There we go. I've also put in these uh, normalizers where you see the, uh, I'm sorry, the exponentials the throttle exponential, brake exponential, and clutch exponential. And what that's going to do is that's going to progressively uh, add a progressive algorithm to any of those axes. So it'll kind of smooth out the lower end of it and uh, add more of the business at the top end. So it's nice on the brake where it'll smooth out the lower end where you don't have to, um, you know, if you've got a, a load cell or a, a brake mod, a Nixon brake mod, or a chunk of rubber behind your brake or something. Uh, kind of works a little bit better with that. So uh, later in the game, uh, in development, we're going to actually have uh, sliders for uh, sensitivity adjustments and whatnot. But for now, that'll just kind of add a generic uh, blanket over all those. And you can turn each one of them on and off per axis to, to change each one. And then uh, below that, you'll see the handbrake axis and the H gate shifter. These are both off by default. Uh, the H or the H gate shifter is for obviously using the H gate shifter. Uh, you have to set it up in the configurations uh, launch menu in the beginning. Uh, each gear, and then if you want to use it, you just click this thing on here, or just leave it off by default to use the sequential shifter. And then uh, you'll see handbrake. Uh, you can you can uh, assign either a button for the axis on the handbrake, or I'm sorry, you can either assign a button or an axis. And when this is on, it's uh, using the axis, and when this is off, it's using the button. So it's off by default because not a lot of people have a, a fourth axis for a, a handbrake. So off by default, if you do have an ax uh, axis for your handbrake, go ahead and click that on, and then uh, make sure in the beginning of the game there uh, in the keyboard mapper uh, that that's set up properly. So All right, then once you have your pedal set up and uh, working properly, You've got uh, the wheel settings here where you can turn the force feedback on and off. Invert force feedback if it's uh, you know pulling the wrong way once you get onto the track and test it out. Uh, hide the wheel. Some people like to hide the wheel like myself. I run uh, a really low uh, field of view so I like to turn the wheel off so it's not in my face. Um, the force feedback strength, obviously just a multiplier so you can turn that up and down. I run in global settings. Uh, recommended is about 60% in your global settings for Logitech and for uh, Thrustmasters. Anywhere around 60-65% is, is uh, going to keep you under the clipping area. Um, I think default in the game is at, uh, is at 60% or, or a 6 here. Uh, I turn mine down to right around 5. That keeps it uh, from clipping and gives you a nice broad range of force feedback through the whole suspension cycle kind of thing. Uh, below that you're going to see the calibrate button. That's going to take you back to uh, uh, if you need to recalibrate because once you calibrate the first time and you come back into the game, you know, after starting, let's say after your third or fourth time, it won't take you to the calibration system automatically unless you ask it to. And that's how you do it. You open this options menu and you can pop into here and recalibrate. And that's only if you change your uh, Windows profiler settings. Or every now and then it's good to, you know, jump in and do a calibration. It only takes, you know, 10 15 seconds to turn the wheel 90 degrees to the right. So, uh, below that is your uh, wheel rotation that we had already previously uh, set before this. So, then you've got the miscellaneous settings where you can change the time of day, which is, affects the uh, uh, lighting. For now, and the weather system will also be under miscellaneous settings in the future. Record replay is uh, still work in progress. 
Uh, in the future, it will record an uh, AVI file directly to your hard drive, for you can share them and review them later in the game. Uh, lap timer shows an on-screen stopwatch. Uh, GPS is uh, obviously an on-screen GPS. Uh, you're going to need it for some of the larger off-road rally races and some of the desert races that we're going to have on some of the big maps. Uh, free look cam is the head tracking system uh, where you can use with free track or whatnot. Uh, this is a sensitivity multiplier. You can slide that up and down to change that. Uh, I believe that covers it for the options. Close that. We'll go to the paints. Uh, obviously, each one of these will change the paint menu. Actually, let's go to a car. That will do it. Let's go to the Pro 2. Pull up the paint menu. Um, cycle through the paints. If you want to load your own, you go to Browse. That will bring up a menu where you can actually pick from anywhere on your hard drive. Uh, slide the sliders. You can change colors of the wheels and whatnot. And uh, it will remember uh, what paint you used last on each vehicle, too. So uh, whenever you close it, uh, again, stop button. Uh, if you want to quit, use this. Click yes to do that, and it will actually save your settings whenever you quit. But we're not going to do that. We're going to no. Uh, car setup menu and the go drive menu. we've got the car menu. Uh, cart light, basically 18 horsepower pull start single seat uh, uh, mini cart. The cart pro is uh, 454 stroke, about 50 horsepower, uh, five speed manual with reverse uh, centrifugal, or I'm sorry, uh, sequential transmission. Pro 2 is a 812 horsepower 3 speed manual. It says 5, but I gotta fix it. It is a 3 speed uh, automatic, but you shift it manually. Um, it does have the option where you can turn on automatic clutch and automatic transmission, so you can drive it with just a gas, a brake, and a steering wheel if you don't have a clutch. Uh, Pro 4 uh, also has that. All, uh, actually, all the cars have that option. Uh, if you go into car setup under miscellaneous, you can turn on automatic transmission and automatic clutch. Obviously, the cart light, which is just a centrifugal clutch, already has that. But uh, uh, and then the D hatch. I'm sorry, the other the D hatch all-wheel drive is the newest uh, addition, which is it's the first rally car in uh, D series, uh, which is a non-turbo rear-engine all-wheel drive tube chassis. Uh, 320 horsepower, 255 foot-pounds of torque. Uh, your standard uh, scratch-built rally rear engine, uh, uh, I like to call it the DRC light, if you will, hatchback. And then tracks. We've got track one is a, let's click that. Uh, track one is the demo track, basic outdoor. Uh, I think it's about a mile and a half. Uh, outdoor, off-road, semi-sandy, um, uh, semi-hard-packed clay. So it's got a little bit of both. Uh, track 2, uh, similar, uh, but more trail riding, uh, more hill climbs, uh, water crossings, more fun uh, mess around, uh, go play in the backyard kind of track. Uh, 3 is the indoor cart track. Uh, perfect for the, uh, you can run the trucks in there, they're a little big but uh, uh, literally built just for the carts. Uh, some great indoor racing in there. Uh, track four is some long distance through the woods, uh, good for the rally car, and uh, really letting the trucks, uh, letting them uh, get up to speed. Uh, track five is brand new. I just finished this a couple days ago. It's kind of a mock-up of uh, what I want uh, to build for some of the rally cars. Not a lot of big jumps, uh, more uh, two tracks through the woods, um, rally style racing. Uh, six, seven, eight, and nine. Haven't finished those. To rotate the camera any which way up, down, left, or right, just hold the right mouse button. And you can also zoom in and out with the center mouse wheel or by hitting the bracket keys at any time. You can also drop the car with the space bar. And the longer you hold the space bar, the harder it will drop the car to the ground. Just tap it once, it'll drop it nice and soft. Uh, also, it's nice for checking the droop and kind of the down travel. Also, checking the dampening is real nice too because you can simulate going over different size bumps by holding it for 
different times. Uh, at any time you can hit escape it'll bring up this short menu with all or the extra help menu with all the short keys. And we'll kind of go over more through that when we get on the track. Um, take a screenshot is hold F and you can again use the right mouse button holding the right mouse button down moving the mouse around you can frame your shot. And then when you get it where you want uh, by holding the F button or F key you just hit the left mouse button and that actually takes the shot. Uh, what else? Wash the car by hitting the wash button up here at the top. Um, and after you've got the wheel and the pedals and you've checked everything down here in the corners and got all your stuff working good, um, go ahead and pick your track and pick your car and head out to the track. Go. Okay, once you're on track, uh, again you can hit escape at any time and kind of go through all the short keys and there is different keys for the driving area and the garage area so hit the escape key to close that. F1 is going to be your main onboard cam which is uh, the default cam. Uh, the number pad is going to move the seat so 8 is going to be forward and backwards, 8 and 2, 2 be be being backwards, 8 being forwards, 7 being angled up, 1 being angled down, 9 will move the camera up, and 3 will move it down into the seat lower. Uh, 5 at any time will take it back to default instantly. Uh, when you're in this camera as well is when you can use the free look, you just hit uh, the X key and that will turn on the uh, um, free look, mouse look, uh, hat switch, uh, whatever you want to call it, head tracking. Um, at any time if you're in this mode and you hit the C key it will automatically return your rate to center. Uh, hit the X key it will go right back to where it was looking once again but C will kind of automatically center you. Uh, it'll also make the look right and look left uh, flat buttons or whatever buttons you assign to the look right and look left will work only in the F1 uh, and the F5 keys which is the triple rendering key. So let's go to key 2 now. Key 2 is hood cam, or I'm sorry, uh, key F2. Key F3 is the roll bar cam. Key F4 is the uh, orbit cam, which works exactly like the garage cam, where you can right click and uh, swivel around, zoom in and out. Uh, F5 is the triple rendering, where it works exactly like the F1 key, the standard onboard cam where you can 7 and 1 to angle up and down, 9 and 3 to go uh, into the floor up towards the ceiling, 8 and 2 moving forward and backwards. But now it has an extra set of keys where the 4 and the 6 on the number pad will actually angle the side monitors correctly so you can set that uh, perfect field of view. And uh, speaking of field of view, it's the bracket keys. And we want to go to the F. Oh, we got F5. So the F6 key is going to be the TV cams, and this one's up on a big flagpole that's all the way on the other side of the track. Uh, while you're in F5 key, or I'm sorry, F6 key, which is the TV cam, whenever you're in this mode, you can actually hit the F7, which will bring up a picture-in-picture picture that you see down here in the corner, so you can drive from inside the truck while still watching the TV cams. So. Uh, about the only other things I can think of are uh, anytime you get upside down or you get stuck somewhere, hit uh, the R key will automatically bring you back to the bits. Um, the D key will automatically fix any damage. You see there, that has been done to the truck. Uh, it won't bring the fenders back on, though I blew those off hitting a couple trees just now. Uh, turn the lights on is L. You see the lights out there. Um, turn them on and off as L key. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, the wheel force indicators. Uh, these are kind of like a debugging if you're testing and want to test some suspension setups. Uh, hit the J key and it will give you uh, four keys to uh, shows the weight on uh, kind of like a kind of like scaling uh, a car and gives you the weight at each corner. Um, what else? Uh, screenshot is the same. We hold the F key. 
uh, starting the car is the I button or you can also in the beginning you can map that to a key on your steering wheel or any button for that matter um, I think that just about does it uh, yep oh to turn the yeah the GPS you can turn hit T and that turns the lap timer on. You can see it's already running. I've been doing a couple laps. Anytime you want to see your results, just hit the print slip. It will show an actual list of uh, your last 25 laps. When you're done with 25, it will start deleting and redo the first 25. Uh, let's see, we can close that. Hit the G key to bring up the GPS system. You can zoom in and out with these buttons here. Or the number pad also works here. Zoom in and out. You can go from roaming mode uh, back to tracking mode. Works just like you're any GPS you'd find in a car. And I believe that will about do it. There'll be more videos on uh, car setups and uh, fine-tuning the rest of the sim. Thanks for watching.